Make sure you have Node.js installed on your machine. If not, visit nodejs.org. Download the package for your machine and install it. Once installed, run the command node-v to check if this has been installed successfully or not. It should return the node version installed on your machine. I am using version 8.9.2 for this tutorial. Next we need to clone the repo from git. Visit this repo on git, link is provided in the description section of this tutorial. Either you can clone using the git clone command on your machine or you can download the zip file and extract it. I am going to clone it. Open the terminal of your choice. I am using integrated terminal of VS code. Run this command git clone and paste the path of the repo copied from git. It will hardly take any time to clone it on your machine. Once done, navigate to the folder webdriver-io-boilerplate and run npm install. It may take few seconds to a couple of minutes depending upon your internet speed. And that's it. Your framework is set up on your machine and you can start writing test cases. Let's now look at few important commands. In fact, just one with different parameters to run test cases for different viewports. npm run hyphen hyphen space hyphen p page name hyphen b breakpoint. For example, npm run test hyphen 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 p page one hyphen b large. This command will run all test cases written for large devices in folder page one. You can specify different breakpoints. Options are small, extra small, medium and large. And folders that you want to run test cases for. The options are defined in the configuration file. Let's have a look at this file. Webdriver.config.js file contains all the necessary configuration required for your project. Let's quickly touch all these statements. The first two lines are to include and test files that need to be executed as per parameter passed in the command that we discussed earlier. You can find the details in the specs.js file. Next, we are creating the overall information of the test run for logging purpose and passing it to capabilities object. In capabilities object, we have defined the browser and the emulation options. If user executes the command npm run hyphen p page one hyphen b small, then test cases from page one folder will be executed on Chrome browser where the device width will be set as 768 pixels. You can visit the WebDriver IO documentation to learn more, but this will be good to start with. Next, we have the actual config section. You can move the capability section and a separate file for even better and clean code, but this is also fine. So first, we have defined host and port where we want to run our server. We will talk about the commented section later. Then the test files that will be executed, then Selenium standalone service is required. Max instances, how many parallel test suits do we want to execute? Value 10 here means that maximum 10 different Chrome browsers will open in case we have 10 or more test suits. This saves execution time a lot, but depends upon the processing speed of your machine as well. Now sometimes we do have situations where elements appear after some delay or there is an ajax call which generates new elements on the page. This attribute wait for timeout is the default wait time that we want for any such call. So you need not mention the wait time for every such call. In case you want to use different wait time for any specific instance, you can override it by specifying the new wait time in that command itself. Then comes capabilities selected according to parameter passed by user. Here comes the feature that is the best one this framework provides, sync. For any asynchronous call, you need not write any promises if you set its value to true. 
If you have worked with Protractor, you must have faced that irritating nested then statements to handle promises. But now you need not worry about it. WebDriver IO smartly handles all asynchronous calls synchronously for you and allows you to write extremely simple code. You will come to know when we will do hands-on. Then we have different types of report options here. Uh, this is enough to know as of now from this file. In next video, we will have a look at the folder structure and then we'll do some hands-on.